Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. We got a great easy tutorial today on how to create a awesome glitch transition with more traditional grain and more TV type effects that we'll be doing right here in this After Effects video. So I always like to suggest if you're on a time crunch and you need to create these type of glitch transitions really quick, just buy a template. Um, we're going to be breaking down this template off of Video Hive. The link will be in the description. I'm also going to link a few other nice glitch transitions on there as well so you can quickly check them out and also I highly suggest to go ahead and break them down and see how you can create your own work as well so I think it's a great way to learn this by breaking down templates so let's get started we have two clips in here that we're going to transition between and what we want to do is go to layer new solid and we call this one transition and we're only going to use one layer for this entire project so first things first go to effect noise and grain and we'll add noise and this is a pretty easy effect. So let's go to the first frame where we want to start seeing this transition happen. So maybe we'll go to like eight frames. So first things first, let's add a keyframe for amount of noise, move forward by one frame, and we'll set this up to about 30%. And then we'll move forward by a handful of frames here, add another keyframe right down here in the timeline. So it'll be set at 30%. And then we'll go over by one frame, set this down to 0%. And we'll move over by a couple of frames, add another keyframe, and we'll set this one up to like 20-ish or 30-ish percent and then we'll move forward by a lot of frames here and set this down to or set this up to about 80 percent and then we'll move over by one frame and we'll set this down to zero percent so now we just have some basic noise in here that we have a little bit of control over and it's very random so that's nice then we'll go up to effect transition and we'll add venetian blinds so let's just increase the transition completion up just by a little bit so we can see what we're doing and we're gonna set the direction to 90 degrees and we can come here and maybe set down the width to six so it's a little bit more thin and we're starting to kind of see that nice thin lines in there it might be a little bit hard let me turn off the first effect real quick so we can see what we're doing and that's looking pretty decent so now so we'll start this effect a little bit after our noise effect starts and we'll set the add a keyframe for transition completion set it down to zero percent and we'll move over by one frame and we'll set this up to about probably about 20 ish percent move over by another frame and we'll increase this even more so we're going to kind of just hand keyframe this, but we'll be able to control the transition here. So maybe we'll bring this down to 0%. And then we'll continue to come over here, do like 20%, go down to 0%, maybe set another 0% keyframe. And then we'll come over here and increase this by 30%. So basically what we're doing here is we're just obviously creating a nice random amount of Venetian blinds here. Okay, so now we have our Venetian blinds going on here, and we turn our noise effect back on. So let's go ahead and add another noise effect in here to really ramp up the noise. So go back to noise and grade and add another noise effect. So we definitely want to make sure that there's a nice amount of noise between the cut here. So let's come here to maybe you know a few frames before the cut, and we'll add a keyframe for amount of noise, go to right to the cut, and we'll increase the noise to probably about 30 to 40%, and then we'll kind of fade that off go over by 10 frames and set it back down to 0%. So we'll have a little bit more noise here at the cut and obviously it'll cover it up. Now, you're probably thinking, well, I can't see through this layer and we're not done yet, but I'm gonna show you this real quick. So if you toggle switches and modes until you see this kind of moon type icon, the adjustment layer icon, you can click that and this will be used as an adjustment layer. The only reason why I'm using a solid is so we can just hide these layers down here and we can still see what we're doing. We can still see there's noise. If we did this to adjustment layer, we wouldn't be able to see the noise if we hid our video layers. So that's the reason why I'm using a solid. And continuing this effect, let's go to effect, color correction, color balance, HLS. So to make this a bad TV effect, we really want to affect the saturation of the shot. So let's come over here to the saturation, add a keyframe, move forward by a couple of frames here. Make sure I hit, bring up all the keyframes here. And we'll decrease the saturation. And we'll able to start this over a little bit more. So we have a little bit more time to really tweak this in here. And we'll go ahead and increase the saturation up by a little bit. And we'll kind of do the same thing manually, keyframing all this and having a nice controlled keyframes just so uh, we can keep everything in you know control. So we're kind of just saturating the image. I'll go ahead and keep this hidden so we can see what we're doing. And we'll come here and really bring this down maybe. Okay, and then make sure the last keyframe is set at zero and you should have this nice color flicker effect in here. And to top off our last effect, we'll go to effect, distort, and we'll add transform. And we'll start this at maybe just a few frames before the cut 
We'll add a keyframe for scale, keep it at 100, and move over by one frame, and let's increase the scale to about 300. And then we'll go past the cut just by a couple frames. We'll add a keyframe down here to keep it at 300, and then we'll lower it down to zero. Or oh, sorry, and we'll lower it back down to 100. And we'll offset this keyframe by one frame here just so it'll kind of glitch out a little bit. And then the last thing we have to do here, open up the transform property, go to compositing options, and we'll set the effect opacity down to 40%. So now we'll kind of get this cool kind of double faded look here. We can see through it and things look really cool. So let's go ahead and render this out real quick and we'll see what we have. And with a quick preview, here's our glitch transition. We have a few nice effects in here to emulate the bad TV effect. And I hope you're able to take away a few of these techniques from this tutorial and apply it to your own projects. So if you did enjoy this video and found it helpful, please be sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more After Effects projects just like this. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of the video. And always be creating.